and two straight losses away from home. And this is not the kind of environment you want to try and snap that road losing streak. No, I agree with you, Ralph. This is a very tough place to play. And, and what's happening here is you're really facing an excellent UOP team. And this is Bobby Thomas's, maybe his best team ever, and they won 24 games last year. So I think a very difficult game for Fresno State. They will need their A game, and they will have to control the tempo because don't forget, this club has not lost here in 22 consecutive dates. So this is going to be a tough one, and I'm sure Fresno's ready to go. A very, very loud crowd. And this is a different team that we've seen in the past for Pacific because of the big man, and they've got a good one. Yeah, they have a great big guy, and maybe the best big guy in the country in Mike Olawakandi. A lot of people don't know about him, but he's coming off of two huge games. Look at the numbers on him at 19 a game. Avondre Jones will have to defend him. He will have to play an excellent game in the post, have to move him away from the basket. And this is going to be a terrific matchup. Avondre Jones, I think, playing real well. Jerry Tarkanian has him going good, but he's got a tough test tonight. If the two guys negate each other in, outside, inside, you turn to the outside game. Well, the two outside guys, uh, you're looking at two terrific guards. Uh, for UOP, you got Adam Jacobson. And Jacobson is a guy that's an all-conference player, did not play last year. He's coming off an injury. And, and redshirted last year, but an all-league player, he can shoot the three. And Rafer Alston will have to defend him tenaciously on the outside. I think Rafer's going to have to control his game route. He's going to have to make good decisions. And don't forget, he's still learning. It's going to take him maybe three, four, five more games to really get it together. But this would be a nice start if he did it tonight. An important game for the confidence of all of these Bulldogs. We'll be back. It's a Cats against the Dogs after this. Time out. Center in Stockton, the Fresno State Bulldogs getting ready to take on the UOP Tigers. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Perko's Cafe. Up front, it'll be Folks and Roberson for the Bulldogs. Tremaine Folks, Fresno State's leading rebounder, averaging 12 a game, but also battling some back spasms. The man in the middle we've already talked about of Andre Jones. The guards will be Rafer Austin and Willie Farley, starting for Chris Heron, the head coach of the Bulldogs, of course. Jerry Tarkanian, his third season at his alma mater, a record of 45 and 25 in those three years at Fresno State. 
for the Pacific Tigers, winners of 22 in a row here on the home court. Up front, it'll be Jason Williams and Aaron Volitsko, the two forwards. The big man in the middle, 7'1", center, Michael Olawapendi, the leading scorer, averaging 19 points per game. The guards, Adam Jacobson and Earl Clark, a sophomore, working at the point guard for Bob Thomason's Tigers. Thomason, his 10th season at his alma mater. He's second all-time on Pacific's coaching victories list. We'll be back with the starting tip-off right after this timeout. at the Spanish Center. Officials for tonight's basketball game here in Stockton. Jim Stupin, Bill Vinovich, and Jerry Scott. They'll be working the ball game for us tonight. Series history, this is a long one, going back to 1923. Pacific leading the overall series. The Tigers have also won eight of the last 12, although Fresno State won last year at Selen Arena in a very close game, 75 to 71. Tonight's opening tip-off is brought to you by California Apples. Representing the apple growers of California, you can taste the difference. Oluwakande, number 55 there, going to tip it off against Devondre Jones. Candyman, they call him. Yeah, they, they probably can call him anything he wants. I mean, he, he has been a terrific player so far in the early season for the University of Pacific. Mike Olawakandi, remember that name, because I think he's going to go very high in the NBA draft. Coming off a 25-point, 15-rebound game against St. Mary's Thursday night. Volitsko opens the score with a three for Pacific. Aaron Volitsko. Now, Ralph, you see the theory right away. You put your best three-point shooter on the same side of the floor as Oliver Candy, and what happened there? Well, the dogs dropped down to defend Oliver Candy, and Volitsko, who's an excellent shooter from outside, knocks the three down. Came in averaging 36%. Air ball put up by the Bulldogs, and here come the Tigers. Looking inside. Take it, then dishes off. That's Jason Williams working on Willie Farley, who knocks it away and out of bounds. Bryce no State basketball. Yeah, definitely a good call. And the ball was deflected off a UOP Tiger player and, and out of bounds. And Fresno State now and Jerry Tarkanian hoping his club can get off to a little better start. I mean, this has been uh, one of the problems with Fresno State of late. They have not started well. They've been slow in the first half, so they need to exhibit some patience, run their motion, try to maybe get the ball inside to see if they can execute. Austin ties the game with a three for Fresno State. But on second thought, if Austin's wide open, <laughs> see, go, just go ahead and let him shoot it. Nice to see Rafer uh, get off strong. Great help by folks. Now you have to rotate. You have to rotate, get back to him. Jason Williams cans the jumper from the top of the key. 5 3 Pacific. And Bobby Thomason was saying before the game, you know, we, we really haven't shot that well. <laughs> From the outside. And, and Jerry Tarkanian would yeah. say, tell me about it. Neither yeah. agree. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden, UOP comes out and makes two bombs. Tremaine Folks, baseline drive in traffic. Puts it up. Foul on the play. 
See, I think it's really smart to take the ball right to the goal. Let, let, let's force UOP to defend. And here again, inside, very strong as Tremaine folks can put the ball on the floor. Take it right to Oliver Candy. I, I think you challenge him. You go right to him, force him to defend, get him in some foul trouble if possible. But I think even when the ball goes inside to Avondre Jones, I would like to see Avondre turn and take it toward the goal and force Oliver Candy to defend. Even if he blocks a shot or two, still continue to take it in and take it strong to the rim. That foul was on Jason Williams, his first to main folks making the first three throw now down to tie for five and hits. Now the pressure. And here's where I think uh, Fresno State can cause some problems. Get in the backcourt, get up, look to double team right away and rotate. You got a 10 coming. All right, they, they got it over. Jacobson. Again, the Bulldog defense there. Jacobson. Inside, Oliver Kendi. Dumps it off. Strong block from behind by Avondre Jones and out of bounds. Nice recovery by Avondre Jones. Now, now here's one thing Oliver Kendi does that he has he has to just get rid of get out of his repertoire. He's going to get the pass inside. Here's the block from behind and a beautiful play by Avondre Jones. Oliver Kendi puts the ball on the ground every time he gets it. 21st block of the season for of Andre Jones, the pass stolen by Willie Farley. Roberson steps behind the three-point line, in and out. Rebound, Jones puts it up and in. Oh, what a play by Avondre Jones. How do you like it? Let's block the shot at one end. Let's start the break with the pass, and let's run the floor and get the tip in. I love it. Jacobson for three. Hits. Now you can hold a four ground to leave Adam Jacobson alone on a perimeter. You got to remember, he's the all-time leading three-point shooter in UOP history. So you have to get out. It is imperative to get out on him. Now with 257 threes, Adam Jacobson. Folks, throws up in traffic. Tipped up and in by Roberson. Fresno State regains a one-point lead. Very active Fresno State team on the glass. Williams, the one-hander. Is doing it from inside, outside, doing a nice defensive job so far in Oliver Candy. And the next time you'd like to see Evandri maybe fake that J and take it right to the goal. Bring it strong to the glass and force the big guy to guard it. The looks go too strong. Rebound comes off to Oliver Candy. Clark in trouble, gets it inside to Williams, picks it up, but he's fouled. Jones will be called for the foul, sending Williams to the line. Yeah, very fast tempo game, and this is a, an experienced UOP club. And, and as Williams receives the ball inside, Avondre Jones is playing really behind him and had to come over for help. It really wasn't his man. He was in the vicinity. He looked for the block that time and picked up the foul. This is a Pacific team that uh, has allowed opponents just 57 points a game. We're at a pretty good pace tonight. Yeah, I would say that. We, we, we scored 21 points. We haven't played four minutes yet. Uh, let's see, we're on a real good pace. Yeah, there has not been a whole lot of missed shots in this game. Listen, this has been a very high-level ball game. Williams is Pacific's leading scorer with five points. Looking for number six. Trying to snap in an 11-11 tie. They take Ray for Austin out, out of the game, so... Demetrius Porter here has got a big job on his hands. He's going to try to control his head. Now zoned by UOP. See, Austin comes out, who's a, a three-point shooter, and uh, right away, Pacific goes zone. So they recognize the fact that Fresno does not have their best zone team offensively on the floor. Willie Farley turns the ball over. We have a timeout on the floor. Pacific leading Fresno State by one.
already a good one. Fresno State down by a point to Pacific here on the road where the Tigers have won 22 in a row. You see these shooting percentages. That's up there, Dan. Yeah, it is up there, and there's been some three-pointers in that barrage also. So both teams doing a nice job from the field. And I don't really think it's bad defense. I just think you've got guys out there who can make plays and make shots. Can Pacific keep up this tempo? Well, if they do, I think it falls right into Fresno State's hands. I think Pacific looking to slow it down a bit and get all the candy involved. Now, don't forget, Avondre Jones does have one foul. So if you're the University of Pacific right now, you want all the candy to be the focal point of the offense. You want to get him the ball down low and see if he can pick up the second foul on Avondre Jones. Because if two fouls come up, then all of a sudden you take him out of the game. You know, by the way, the 35-second clock is not working. So uh, the referees have a bit of a problem because there's no real put it at the side. table. Yeah. I can't find one. Well, the players have a problem, yeah, too. And the players are supposed come. to have something on the floor, and I don't see it. No, I, there's no 35-second clock visible. That, so this is, this is going to be a huge problem. To tell you the truth, they haven't needed it yet. No, they haven't. They, they normally don't, but still, uh, there are times in the game where you, you've got to have it. Well, see, they're going to try to go now. He's going to try to take it in strong. Blocked by Andre Jones. That's two for Jones in the game. I think Avondre has to be somewhat cautious, though. If you continue to go for shot blocks, eventually they will call a foul. And, and this is, again, a good... See, Avondre's at one guy that can play behind at the post and, and still make a play and make a shot block. I don't think Ola Candy's played too many people where he's received the ball three feet from the goal. Well, turned around and got it blocked. Damon Forney into the game for Tremaine Folks for Fresno State. Ray for Alston back in as well as Demetrius Porter goes back to the bench. It's still a long three. It looks good. It's good. It's a beautiful pass by Jacobson. I mean, you can tell these guys have played together now for a long, long time. It's a veteran University of Pacific team. They got three seniors starting, and uh, they, they play very well together. Zone again by Pacific. Oh, that's a three. Rebound. Jones had it, lost it. Over to Candy comes out with. Foul on Fresno State. Ray for Alston, his first. Fresno State trying to trap up, and here right away they go trap, and Alston right in the corner does get a little bit of the of the arm, and the official right on the play. And the reason why they're trapping, they want Pacific to play quicker. They do not want UOP running that 35-second clock, the one you can't see because it's not operating, but they still don't want them to run it. They want them to play much faster than they're used to. They are playing quicker, and they are scoring, and they are hurting the dogs with good rotation because they're not turning the ball over. Again, a terrific pass inside, that time from Valetsko, who throws to Williams inside and puts it up on the glass. And this is just good sound basketball because Fresno State's not able to trap and steal the ball. First foul on Terrence Roberson. Williams converts the three-point play. He leads all scorers with nine. And Pacific up by seven. And the zone again. Now, you might as well stay in the zone. Of course, Olsen's in there now is going to cause some problems. Avondre James, no good. Rebound for Litschko. You've got, got to be alert for Jacobson because he floats down the floor and gets behind the arc. Well, it can be turns blocked again, but a foul on Jones. That's number two. Well, you know their program, Ralph. I mean, it, Avondre Jones has one foul. So where has the ball gone the last three times down to Ola Wakandi? Now, the shot was blocked the last time, but if you continue to attempt to block shots, eventually the official will call a foul. So now, decision time, really, for Fresno State. Do you leave him in? Do you take him out? Obviously, Jerry's going to leave him in right now. Avondre Jones saying, Coach, I'm okay. I'm going to play a little bit more cautiously. Now, I'll have a quiz for you. Where do you think the ball will go the next time down the floor when, when UOP comes down? You can bet it's going to go right to Ola Candy again. And Avondre Jones with two fouls is going to be handcuffed. 
as Ola Candy makes the second free throw. It's 19-11, a 9-0 run for Pacific. And, and the zone has, has really caused much of that. Fresno State has not attacked the zone, nor have they scored a point against the zone since UOP went into this defense about three minutes ago. Alston's pass off the hand of Terrence Roberson. Pacific with Lob two it. on one. Lob it. Hello. Oh, Candy, no good rebound Roberson. Looked like that one was in the bank. Forney for three. And that's good. Damon Forney. It's a five-point swing. I mean, Oliver Candy should have dumped that ball at the other end of the floor. Watch a back door and you gotta fight your way through here. Uh, this is a guy you cannot leave open. You just can't leave. You got to jump out on him. Somebody has to get out of him. That was an NBA three by Adam Jacobs. Forney drives. Whistle. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, we're going to save before the shot. No basket. <laughs> Foul is on number 30, Volichko. His first. Jerry Tarkanian arguing that the basket should have counted. I, I thought I thought at first. Boy, look at the coach. I thought at first, Ralph, they did go with a signal, but you know what I think Jim Stupin was doing? He was pointing to the ground saying he was fouled first. And no and no basket. Now Jerry doesn't complain a whole lot. Yeah, you know, if you talk to officials, he, he really is a guy that does not say much with it. See, here's the foul. Now the foul is there. I, I think. It's re that is really close. Is he in the act of shooting? It very, very close. It's one, it's one maybe you get at home, Ralph, and you don't get it on the road. Bulldogs down by eight. Jones turns, fires, and hits. And Bobby Thomason does take Oliver Candy out of the game. I mean, he does not leave him in to play a full 40. And now you, you might take a Vondry Jones out. You know, without all the candy in there, this might be a, uh, this is, I think, a very good substitution because he is coming out of the game right now. Larry Abney replacing a Vondre Jones who goes to the bench with six points and two fouls. And has been very impressive. Now, so I've seen a Vondre Jones play for many years. I saw him play when he broke in at SC. And I'll tell you what, he is playing marvelous basketball here at Fresno State. Scott Thomason into the ball game. Jacobson steps inside the three-point line and hits the deuce. Oh, that's like a layup. Oh, that's like, see, his 15-footer is like most guys shooting a three-footer. Eight points for Jacobson, an eight-point lead for Pacific. Alston. Thomason gets it across court. Now, Porter is a tenacious defender. I mean, he'll get out there and, and you know you're being guarded. Got to help. Got to help here. Thomason for three. Rebound. Battle four inside and taken by Phony. Alston inside. Abney no good. Rebound. Phony off his foot. And Thomason goes down. Turnover. That was a very good defensive job by Tremaine Folks. Stay right on a play, stay with it strong, get right to the man with the ball. The missed shot, and here's the ball that was deflected off of Forney. And look at Tremaine Folks. He, he doesn't go back. He goes right to Thomason and forces the turnover. So each coach had a little beef with the officials already in this game. 12.05 remaining in the first half. You know what I like about this game so far from the official standpoint? I think they're letting them play. I mean, there's not a whole lot of fouls being called, and I don't think there should be in this high-level game. You've got some good players on the floor. Let them go. Terrence Roberson back in the game for Fresno State. This is 40 inside. Quick release and scores. Damon Forney has struggled recently with his offense. Five points early in this one. There's a double up. See if you can rotate. Rotate. All over Candy. Thanks it in. Well, uh, Ralph, that's just a veteran backcourt player in, in Adam Jacobson who was harassed and still had the presence of mind to find the open player. 
Tremaine Folks, strong on a three, comes off to Jacobson. Thomas and draws the foul on Dimitri Lewis Porter. There's a timeout on the floor here at Stockton, 11-13 remaining in the first half. Bulldogs down by eight. Selling Arena on Tuesday, hosting St. Mary's at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, the Dogs will be at 1997 NCAA Semifinals Minnesota. Tip-off against the Golden Gophers set for 6.30 p.m. Fresno time. Tickets still available for tomorrow's women's basketball game against UCLA. Tip-off set for 2 p.m. in the North Gym on campus. This week in Bulldog Sports is brought to you by Glendale Federal Bank. 11-13 remaining here in the first half. Fresno State trailing Pacific 26-18. Well, you know where the ball's going now. I mean, they have to reverse it, Ralph, right now to Oliver Candy. If Andre Jones has two fouls, back in the game. Yeah, see if they can bring it back to him. Wayne Mahaffey for three. So he says, well, we can get three outside. That's fine. Well, that's what's really surprised me about this game. That uh, This is a good three-point shooting team in UOP, but they've been unbelievable so far in the first half. They made everything that they've shot. Demetrius Poor. No good, out of bounds. Pacific ball. I think Jerry, Jerry wants a 20. He just wants to settle everybody down and not let this game get away from him. They're down 11. Very high scoring game. Well, Pacific is on fire right now. 67% of the field. What's their three point? Their three point shooting has to be unbelievable too. They, there you are. See, you talk, guys in the truck. See, you talk about it, and they, I mean, they punch it right up. I mean, they were five for seven, 71 for unbelievable. And Fresno to two for eight. They've had some good opportunities. The ball has not gone down. But I look for Pacific to continue to stay in the zone if uh, if, if the dogs can't make any perimeter shots. Fresno State trailing now by 11. And the other telling factor, Ralph, no turnover so far by the Tigers in, in terms of backcourt play. They've been able to get it up under control and get into their offense without making mistakes. And Bob Thomas had said before the game that was a real key to their success. You got to jump out on it. Jacobson from the outside. He's putting on a show, isn't he? Well, we knew he was a good shooter, but is he this good? <laughs> I guess so. 11 for Jacobson, three three-pointers. Now, you remember last year they were 24 and 8, and he didn't play. So, I mean, how good, how good can this team be? Missed all but two games last year, tearing knee ligaments and needing surgery. Pass off the hands of Damon Foley and out of bounds. Another turnover for Fresno State. 
And when you're behind, like the dogs are, your defense has to key your offense. And that's taking care of the ball. Pacific only three turnovers, and they've been harassed most of the game. Now, Ola Candy, should see, he makes a mistake here. He's got a Bondi Jones in foul trouble. He takes one bounce dribble and throws it out. He's got a golden opportunity to take it right to the goal, and he didn't do it. Now he's going to do it again. Jacobson dishes off and turns it over. Got in trouble in there looking for Ola Candy. Austin had it too far. Good, not a good pass, but a good idea. Just didn't execute it. Had a man over. It would have taken a perfect pass to complete that, but it, it, there was a window of opportunity to get that ball down and in. Tiger basketball out of bounds, leading by 14 now. They miss one. Wow. Check the rims. Check the rim. It's an upset. I think somebody moved the rim while they were down the floor the last time. I can't remember. It was a long shot. Roberson strong again on the three. That's about three air balls the Bulldogs have thrown up. Avondre Jones rattles one ball. Wow, Avondre Jones. How, how did he make that one? That was like a, a fadeaway jump hook. He just threw it straight at the goal. It went down. Jones has eight of Fresno State's 20. And you'd have to say Jones so far has is, is, is definitely outplayed all of a candy. Jacobson for three. And it's again. Well, he, he is a perfect... He's a perfect scenario to box and one. I mean, this guy is... If you ever want to box and one anybody, Jacobson may be the guy. Because you, you just can ill afford to leave him any daylight. He's four out of four in three-point range. Whistle inside on the pass into Andre Jones. Going to be a foul on Pacific. Earl Clark. And this is only the third team foul. As the ball was trying to be put uh, down by the block and... Avondre Jones picks up the foul, and Forney comes right back with the score. Damon Forney now with seven, Avondre Jones with eight. But the Bulldogs still down by 13. Not Looking again. for five for yeah. five, and that's it. Uh, of course. I said not again, but, you know, that's it. Why not? 17. I think what he should do the next time is just come down the floor and shoot a hook shot, maybe from half guard. The way it's going, that'll probably go in. Jacobson this season averaging 11 as Willie Farley hits at the other end for Fresno State. Well, here's the goal if you're Fresno State. I mean, the way Pacific's are completely on fire, I mean, they, they cannot do this the whole game. Can't keep trading threes for twos, can no. you? And you cannot keep <laughs> shooting it that way. But if, if you're... Man, there's a dunk. Candy, man. But you have to put some stops on it. I mean, you just you just have to put some stops occasionally and try to get this thing to single digits at halftime. Jones loses it on the way up, gets it back, puts it in. I think goaltending wasn't going to be called anyway because all of the candy got a piece of it. But count the basket for Andre Jones. He's in double figures with 10. Timeout on the floor, 6.58 remaining. Fresno State trailing Pacific, 40 to 26.
they're shooting 73% on threes. That's good. Fresno State trailing Pacific here by 14 with 6.58 remaining, and that's why. That's one of the reasons why. I, I, it's just, perfect from the field. Somebody always told me that. You know, when, you, when you're like 5 for 5, 6 for 6, that's real good. When you're 7, he has missed a shot. He's 5 for 5 for threes, but he's 6 for 6 for the game. Coaches like guys like that, don't they? They do. You know, those kind of numbers help you win games. Now the double up again. Timeout? Huh? They're going to call timeout. Timeout called by Clark. It's a 20-second timeout. 6.48 remaining. Dan, I, what do you do against a team like this? Punch. Just hope that they punt. Well, you can't punt. That's football. You they're shooting 67% from the field, 73% on three-pointers. Just wait for them to cool off. No, he, you got to some pressure. Don't you? Uh, here's, here's the only thing you can do. You, you, you won't, the only thing you can do is, tr is try to get your intensity on defense even up another notch because that's the only way that, that Jerry knows that his team can come back. He's got to do it at the defensive end, continue to trap, and... You go for the percentages. I mean, they cannot continue to make every shot almost from three-point range. Well, Fresno State actually, actually shooting 50% from the field. The, the dogs are playing well at the offensive end. The problem is here, and I, and I don't think they're playing bad defense. They're just against a club right now that's just making everything. Olitschko well, has it knocked out of there, out of bounds. It'll be Fresno State basketball. Now, that's a, this is the first stop at the defensive end, Ralph, that I can remember in the last uh, maybe three or four times. So you have to take advantage of it. And, and it's man-to-man -man now by, by Pacific. They're going to switch it up. So now you got to recognize, if you're Alston, recognize that they switch the defense, which he has, and get into your offense, get into your man-to-man -man stuff. Farley hits. That's a nice job by Ray for Alston. See, he, he thought it was zone. He said, uh-oh, it's man-to-man. -man. I'm going to back the ball back out, and I'm going to start our offense. Now you need a steal. You need, you need something good to happen. Now you got to hustle back. you got to get back quick. Yep. Jason Williams for three. And made every wild they've shot. Austin with a nice drive for two. Like you say, it's hard to trade three for two. That's exactly what's been happening. Nine three-pointers in the game for Pacific, two for Fresno State. Well, not only has Jacobson made every shot, he's handling the press extremely well. He's, he's just, well, why not? Can he make that? Why not? Six for six. Okay, let it go. Jacobson hits 20 in the first half. There's still five minutes left in the half. Oh, yeah. He, shoot, yeah, he may go for 30 in the first half the way he's going. His career high is 28. Alston looks inside. Off of Andre Jones. They battle for it. Fultz has it blocked. Jones and a whistle. Like a Bondi. They're going to get Volitschko. Yeah, they're going to get Volitschko. Avondre Jones uh, in a pretty good position in there to get the ball. Folks, a shot was deflected by uh, Ola Wakandi, but right to Avondre Jones. And Avondre did the smart thing. When you get it inside, bring it up in traffic, draw the foul, and get to the line. And he's been a pretty good free throw shooter this year. 75% from the line this season. Well, yeah, he has a, he has a very, for a big man, he's got a beautiful touch. I mean, you watch his mechanics. He's got his elbow in the proper spot. He's got nice rotation. Gets that backspin on the ball. Uh, he, he's a very good shooter. Team free throw shooting has not been good for Fresno State at 53 percent, but uh, it's not been good for Pacific either. The Tigers thought that was going to be one of their strong points, and they were shooting just 57 percent from the charity stripe going into the game. Well, it's too close tonight. It's too close, Ralph. The charity stripe's too close. That's they, right. They should move the charity stripe back behind the, the arc and have them shoot their free throws from back there. They probably make them off. I can't believe they missed one. What an upset. Far short. Rebound. Oliver Candy. Under four and a half minutes now, we're in the first half. And one thing Pacific has not done, because their threes have been wide open, they, they really have not been able to get the ball down to Oliver Candy, and he hasn't been able to pick up the third foul on Avondre Jones. They gotta look inside. See, they're not even turning and looking. Yeah, that's a good pass. Well, I like I like that pass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
this guy Jacobson is choreographing this whole game. Bringing the ball up against the press. He's not turning it over. He's making every three. He's coming off the of screens, receiving the ball, not making a mistake there either, and getting the ball inside for easy scores. What more can you do? Jones not ready for that pass. Another turnover for the Bulldogs. There he is again. He Get it to him. Oh, sure. There go. I, totally miss. I think you cut him, Ralph. Right now, you sit him on a bit, cut him. He's out of there. First miss in seven shots. Oh. I'll keep him on the floor. Tremaine Folks ran right into him. So uh, you're right. Adam Jacobson absolutely doing it all. Yeah, he's doing it. Here, here's just a very heady, smart play. It's a veteran guy. He knows what to do. Good position. I think a good call by the official. Looked like Jacobson was set. Timeout on the floor. 3.42 remaining in the first half. 48-32 Pacific. Nissan of Visalia, your South Valley Nissan dealer. By Unical, a proud sponsor of the Bulldogs. And by Primestar. Primestar, the best value in satellite TV. Back at the Spanish Center. Pacific ball out of bounds, leading 48-32. to Dan, you talked about maybe a box and one defense with the, just putting some guy on Adam Jacobson. Would that be effective? Well, I, I don't know if it'd be effective right now. It's, it's something I'm sure that UOP will see this year because when you're down 16 points, uh, it's time to play man-to-man, -man, go up and get them. I, I wouldn't go to it right now, but I think it's something that uh, this club will definitely see as the season goes on. Although with Candy loses it on the way up. Well, he's doing you a real favor when, when he's taking the ball away from the basket the way he is. I mean, he's got a guy defending him, Ralph, that's got two fouls. All he has to do is turn and try to take something toward the goal because if Andre Jones may go up and try to block it and the referee standing right there may call a third foul. Well, he does that thing that so many big men do. There's such a temptation when you get the basketball, put it on the floor. And he is so effective when he just gets it, turns, fires, and shoots. You look at the turnovers in uh, Fresno State with seven, and uh, there's a jumper that Alston gets down. And the, the impressive thing about that statistic was that here at Pacific, only five turnovers. They, they've done a real nice job of handling the basketball in the first half against really excessive pressure. That's just Fresno State's third three-pointer of the game. Pacific has ten. Turnover. Fresno State will get the basketball. It's the first backcourt turnover that I can remember in the first half that the dogs have been able to uh, to cause. It's a kind of turnover. I mean, you want the ball, but it, it didn't lead directly to a score. So sometimes you turn it over quick and you go in and you dunk it. And it's a momentum breaker. You you can you can build from that. But uh, that one there, at least you do get the ball back out. The goal for Fresno State in the final 2:45 of the first half is to get that deficit under double digits before you go to halftime. Trailing by 13 now. And the zone. Tony, offensive foul. Wayne Mahaffey, the big man, drew the foul on Tony. 
Well, again, uh, Pacific well schooled. They stand right in there, and Mahaffey does not go for the block. He just accepts the foul, and the official uh, gives them the call. Look out for the long one here. Now you got to get back. Now you'll see Pacific really change gears, uh, Ralph. They're going to try to dictate the tempo. They're going to try to run some motion and get it inside. A happy inside in traffic. Puts it up. Knocked out of there. Foul is going to be on the happy in the backcourt on Willie Farley. Yeah, that, that's actually a foul that helps Pacific. Because Fresno State was on the dead run. They had three on one going the other way. And, and here's the foul. Mahaffey dives on the ground going for the ball and, and stop. Really what he does in, this, in, in essence is he stops a fast break. I mean, it's, it's not a shooting situation, only the fifth team foul. And Pacific wanted the foul inside when their guy went up to the shot. But Fresno State unable to capitalize on the last turnover. Now gets another opportunity. Alston. Olicandy with Oli that's where you really miss a guy like Heron, who, of course, is not playing. I mean, he's a, he's a terrific perimeter guy who can make shots against the zone. Nice individual effort by Pacific. Again, just dribble the ball all the way down the floor. Clark just takes it in for an easy one. Earl Clark, the sophomore, gives Pacific a 15-point lead now, approaching the minute-and-a-half mark. Alondre Jones, no basket, but he was fouled. Austin is a tough guy to cover because he is so creative with the ball. And Avondre Jones really did, did a very nice job of just keeping his hands up and being alert for the pass. And the pass was soft. It wasn't a hard one and nicely done. And Avondre Jones will get to the foul line. Jones with 12 points in the game, shooting two. coaching staff for Fresno State, you really may want to get Andre Jones with the two fouls out of the game right after this free throw. You, you certainly hate for him to get the third foul with a minute and 35 left in the half. Jermaine Foltz getting ready to check in for Fresno State. Jones misses them both. A minute and a half now left in the first half. And that foul is going to be called on Rafer Alston. Second foul on Austin. The Bulldogs do get Jones out of the game. Replaced by Tremaine Folks. Clark goes to the free throw line for Pacific. Tigers leading by 15 with 1.29 left in the first half. Jason Williams checking in, replacing Rain Mahaffey for Pacific. Williams with 12 points in this ball game. Clark, uh, some South Valley fans will remember, played a season at uh, COS, College of Sequoia, before sitting out last year. He uh, averaged 22 points a game for the Giants two years back. A whistle and a holding foul. Now, Ralph, any time you get a missed free throw and you're down, I mean, you can, it's just a backbreaker to allow the team to get it back. I mean, that's a time you have to hustle it down, and you, you've got to miss in a throw, get it off the glass, and start the break or gain possession. But now you give a team that's got a 15, 16 point lead another opportunity. The second foul on Damon Forney sends Ola Wakanda to the free throw line and hits the rainbow for the first one. Yeah, that ball's a little wet coming down. <laughs> Come on. It got up there in the oh, fog. It's way up there in the fog. It's foggy and had some moisture on it. He's got an odd rotation on this ball. You Normally the rotation should be a backspin. This ball's got to spin sideways. Well, if you just tuned in and saw Ola Candy had only three rebounds and nine points, you'd think Fresno State's in pretty good shape. But Adam Jacobson with 20 for the Tigers, who lead by 18. Alston for three hits. Good in to out that time and a nice pass back to Alston. He was set that time behind the line and he receives the ball from inside. And, and better really in better position to make the shot. Jacobson 
this first half with six three-pointers. Now again, you know, they're holding up they're holding up signs on the other side to tell you how much how many seconds are left. And obviously 20 seconds left on the 35. He, and he, does it again. he, did, he did it again. Come on. Seven three-pointer of the first half. Are you kidding me or what? 23 points in the game. He had hit 19 in the first 10 games. He may, for make, he may make 19 tonight the way he's going. Ray Ralston holding the ball for the last shot for Fresno State. Drives, dishes, Tony will take a three. Yeah. Fresno State with a chance to get it off. Ralston nearly hit it. Head coach Bob Thomason pumps his fist in the air as the teams go to the locker room at halftime. And wow, Fresno State trailing here at Pacific, 56 to 38. Who would have believed it? Maybe the Tiger fans, a sellout here at Stockton. Defensively, they just haven't been able to get the people in the open court. Here, here's a three-pointer here by Alston. Nice pass by Forney on the inside. Remember there, it went inside to out, which set up that shot, and Alston makes uh, one of his three three-pointers. But here's the guy that really put on a clinic in the first half, Adam Jacobson. He gets a good look here, uh, one of his many three-pointers in the first half, and he has really been the guy that uh, put the dagger in the heart. He has made every open jumper. This isn't a replay of the last shot. This is a different one from the same spot, but again, he puts it down from the perimeter. And Adam Jacobson uh, just with a magnificent first half uh, and certainly the catalyst for the University of Pacific. A dozen points for Evandre Jones. Also, though, in early foul trouble. Ray for Alston with 11 for Fresno State. Those are the only two in double figures for the Bulldogs. For Pacific, it's been all Adam Jacobson. Uh, Jason Williams is no. number 54. He is 54, he but he doesn't have... 54, no, he does not have... Uh, that would be quite a half. Jacobson, seven three-pointers in the first half. One short of his record for a game. He owns the Pacific record. You can see the shooting percentages. Fresno State 50%, but the, it's just lights out for the Tigers right now. Yeah, they have, look at look at those uh, three-point uh, field goal percentage high. You know, the rebounds, you would you are even, you, you thought maybe Fresno State might have an advantage, but the turnovers is the story, Ralph, because I thought the dogs might be able to cause some turnovers and get more steals than, uh, than, than the opposition, and the shot block's about even. And few opportunities for rebounds when the ball keeps going through the net. Fresno State needs a big rally in the second half we'll be back with it after this timeout
Steph, what do you tell your guys in the locker room at halftime? It's real simple, Ralph. You, you know, it, it's, a, it's a situation now where you got to come out and play for pride, play with courage, and get up on them and play some hard defense. You know, you're down 18, and the game is not over by a long shot. You just got to come out, start good, make some shots to begin with. You know, like you, that. Yeah, get into your press. You got to get after. It's a character builder. You heard about character builders. This is definitely one of those games. Well, this Fresno State team has already had to deal with a great uh, amount of adversity in this season, winning the first three games at home, but uh, struggling away from home. Now, you see one adjustment already they made at halftime, Ralph. They're not pressing all over the court because uh, UOP's been able to handle it. They've been able to come up and get open opportunity shots, so Jerry has changed that philosophy and is picking up at half court. A whistle outside, Willie really Farley will be called for the holding foul on Jacobson. Now, you might ask, well, why is he doing that? Well, the reason that you, that you now don't want to press them all over, you want to force this team to try to score in a half court. Do not give them opportunity jumpers. They've made every one. A little candy. Turns, fires. Andre Jones bothered that shot. Oliver Candy really does not have it in his mind to go toward the basket. And I think that, that could be a big, big mistake. May not hurt him in this game, but it's certainly going to hurt him down the road. Nice pass. You know, nice. Super Jones. Yeah, you get a quick five. You know, it's a quick five zip to start the second half. Old Arms have trailed by 18 at halftime, now within 13. And 14 points for Jones. Find out real fast the guys that want to play and the guys that don't. Right now, you find out who's going to come up and step up and play. Jacobson fouled on the three-point attempt. It did not go, but he'll shoot three free throws. Second foul on Willie Farley here in the opening minutes of the second half. Yeah, Jacobson, uh, you can really not blame Farley for jumping out at him because uh, he's made every three-pointer almost he shot. And Farley's momentum just carried him into Jacobson, and Jacobson will get the three shots. But uh, that might not be all bad. You know, the, the guy has made quite a few threes. I mean, the next time he shoots one, maybe he'll feel that, that someone's flying at him. 82% from the free throw line this year. And he'll get to do it two more times. This is a real veteran. See a guy that can stop the game. Now, see, fresh. He does everything. Hey, you're fresh, right. Boy. Freshman would never do that. You know, if you're a young guy, you think you're going to go get a towel and tell the referee, you just hold the ball, I'm going to wipe the floor. We talked about all the things he did for the team in the first half. Well, that really takes the cake there. He goes up and he sweeps. Well, he, he wiped the floor down. He pumped up the ball before the game. He's made every shot almost. Stretched out the Pacific rims. He's on a cold streak now. Bulldogs down by 15. Alston. Quick shot. Third ball on the three. Yeah, that was on. That's too quick. And he's hurt. Alston limping. Alston trying to get it all back in a hurry. And uh, may have tweaked his ankle on that shot when he came down. But the ankle or the knee, the left, uh, the left leg or knee, Demetrius Porter bounces off the Bulldog bench. Then goes back and sits down. Inside, a little candy turns, spins, fires. Foul on the play. Is it Jones? Yes, it is. What did Oliver Candy do there that he has not done for, for the majority of the game? Well, he backed in and took it up. Yeah, he backed in, and not only took it up, he took it toward Avondre Jones. See, this is a big difference for what he's been from what he's been doing, and it paid off. 
not a good free throw shooter, as we said earlier, 48%, but that one's good. Averages 19 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks. Now he had a game against Pepperdine where he was, what, 14 of 15 from the floor. 14 of 15. And, and his last game against St. Mary's, he was like 11 of 17 from the floor. So he's had two monster games coming into this one. He scored 26 last year against Fresno State at Salon Arena. Farley pulls up. Rebound over the candy. It's a 16 point lead for Pacific. Under seven, under 18 minutes now left in the game. Try to recall. Nice back. Walk inside. This is off to Williams. Misses the layup and puts it back up and in. Very well executed by Pacific. I mean, they get you in an overplay situation where you're going for the ball and one pump fake and a back cut, and it's an easy score. This team is well drilled. Now the zone. Austin for three hits. See, I like Austin Ralph shooting the ball after receiving a pass because his feet are said his body squared but when he comes right down the floor sometimes it just lets it go it's it can be ill-advised his teammates are not ready for that shot well, let's go to Williams no basket but he was fouled Damon Forney We'll pick up his third. Again, very good interior passing by this Pacific game. Look at this bounce pass on the outside hand. Not only was the bounce pass made through traffic, they hit Williams on the outside hand where the defender could not reach the ball, and he just makes his little follow-through jump hook to the goal and picks up the foul. Jason Williams was last year's NorCal JC Player of the Year out of Diablo Valley College. A scramble for the basketball. Fresno State comes out with it. This is Austin. Roberson. Two star rebound Williams. All over Candy. Backs in again. With Andre Jones. And, and you said it exactly right, Ralph. Uh, Bob Thomason has has really gotten into his ear because now he's backing in. And he's forcing the defense to, to defend him going toward the basket. And let's face it, the guy's 7-1. And he's pretty adept in there when he goes toward the basket. Why he ever fades away is beyond me. Well, the outside was working in the first half with Adam Jacobson. In the second half, it's been Oliver Candy. San Joaquin Valley GMC dealer who has the hottest values in the valley and by Unical, a proud sponsor of the Bulldogs. Sixteen twenty-five remaining now to back up to an 18-point lead for Pacific. Forney with a dunk from Austin. Now what a magnificent pass though by, by Ray for Austin. I mean, how he saw Forney when he was in the air. I mean, the guy does have terrific ability. He just has to get more experience and harness it and be a little bit more under control. And he's going to be one dynamic player for Fresno State. That was a point I wanted you to make because I know in the earlier games, Ray for Austin's almost been too slick for his teammates. Well, the passes have gone off of their hands and he's put it right there. Well, the candy man with a big one there. Nice pass by Velitsko also. I mean, that, that's a planned play, Ralph. I mean, you just lob it up there against the zone. But back to the point on Austin. Uh, playing a little bit more under control. I asked you whether he needed to adjust or if the players should adjust. Well, I, I'll tell you this. Well, my answer to that is bo both have to adjust. Austin cannot be so spectacular that he's got everybody confused on the floor. But at the same time, when you're playing with a guy who's a terrific passer, you have to run around and be alert that he may get you the ball. So th th there's give and take both ways. Williams' long three-pointer, no good. Rebound comes off to Terrence Roberts, and he has Willie Farley. 
Gives it to Farley, who lays it up and in. Yeah, and the only play Jacobson had in that two-on-one was to try to draw the charge. Did you, did you see the play Roberson made? Very smart. He, he avoided the charge. Now, now, here's the trap. Now, what happened the last time the dogs trapped? They lobbed it to Oliver Candy for a dunk. So you have to be mentally alert here that now you're trapping up and you not really have man-to-man -man responsibilities. You're guarding a zone, but they like to lob it in the air and go for the, go for the dunk against this. Williams with a strong move inside. 17 now for Jason Williams. Again, an 18-point lead for Pacific. The other thing the Tigers have done a real nice job at, they have not gotten in foul trouble. Armando Jones with a turnaround no good, a rebound. Volitsko. Oh, Candy, hook shot. Well, he's, he's turning it on now. You know, he got, off, he got off to a bit of a slow start. He's got 16. Got the little jump hook. He's got that lob and a dunk play. Now he's going toward the basket. I'm telling you, you better listen to that name, Oliver Candy, because I think he's going very high in the NBA draft. Pacific with its biggest lead of the game, up by 20. So much for my theory that they can't shoot 68% for the game. They may. Fresno State shooting just 30% from the three-point line as Austin comes up short, took back up. Oh, Candy comes out with a rebound. Now the Bulldogs really having some problems offensively. Got to make those shots, Ralph. I mean, that, that's a shot that a guy like Rafe Austin will make a 9 out of 10. He, unbelievable that he missed it. Oliver Candy bothered by Tremaine Folks. Decided to just put it up and in. It's a lost shot in, in basketball. Big man that can hook the ball. He now has 18. Farley. And this is a terrific rebounding UOP team. I mean, this is one and out for the dogs. Look at Oliver Candy inside again. That was good help. That's the way the whole game is going. I mean, Abney, he gave great help, and now it goes off his hands out of bounds. Jacobson will take it out at the baseline. Well, that's Oliver Candy. Powers it up. Foul going to be called on Damon Forney. That should be number four if it's on Forney. Pacific only shooting 11 of 17 for three. That's not too bad. Here's the play underneath and a collapsing defense. 
But that's how strong uh, Oliver Candy can be. I mean, he just took that up right in traffic and drew the foul. He was mugged in there. Not bad for a guy. What did he do? He called UOP. They picked up the phone, what, at lunch hour. And here's some guy calling from London or wherever he's calling from. Saying, former you know, soccer player. Former soccer player. Said, you know, I'm looking for a scholarship. I'm 7-1. And they thought he was kidding. Oh, yeah, right. You're 7-1 and you're looking for a scholarship. They didn't hear anything until uh, he said 7-1. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then they perked up a bit. And here he turns out to be a tremendous player. Well, it only goes to show you that you better be have your assistance uh, during lunch hour, stay near the phone. Folks, boy, nothing falling for Fresno State right now. Bulldogs have gone absolutely ice cold. Oh, now Pacific, you know, they can just bring it back, throw it to all of the candy every time down the floor. And Avante Jones is going to continue to play behind at the post. All of the candy, yeah, all of the candy becomes a very easy target. So Jones picks up his fourth foul. Thorny has four. See, here's here's the pass from the wing. And look at Oliver Candy now backing of Andre Jones down with his body. And Jones electing to stay behind. Of course, uh, Oliver Candy's a tough guy to get around and play up on the side, but Avondre picks up his, his his fourth personal foul. Folks tipped it away, but then it was deflected back by the Tigers. Jacobson for three. No, he lobs it to Oliver Candy. Who he was so wide open that he could bring it back down, control it, and put it up and in. 21 now for the Candy Man. Jones, that's no good. Well, the more, one of the more impressive things that UOP has done tonight, Ralph, is defensive rebound the ball. I mean, I, I knew this was a good basketball team, but I, I really didn't think they were this good where they could keep the dogs off the glass at the offensive end, but they have. It's been an 11 2, as you see that graphic scoring run. Two points in five minutes for Fresno State. And was that Jacobson or Mr. Jacobson? Well, I think he's going to take, take him out. 11.50 remaining. The lead is now 25 for Pacific. That's right. 75.50. Tigers over the Bulldogs. they're taking chances and they're going for the you know they're going for the ball and they're just they're giving up easy scores i mean i think they're at the point you know they went into that trap that didn't work and what happens with the trap is after you make the first pass or two ralph you're going to get something good i mean you better steal it pretty quick or eventually the offense will get something real good i think they've died at the offensive end <clears throat> yeah Time again for this week in Bulldog Sports, brought to you by Glendale Federal Bank. A reminder, the Bulldog Shop, located at the northwest corner of Cedar and Barstow, is now open on Sundays to take care of all your Christmas shopping needs. Tuesday, make lunch plans with Jerry Tarkanian and the rest of the Bulldog coaching staff at the Time Out Club Luncheon. Lunch served at noon at the Residence Dining Hall on campus. This week in Bulldog Sports, brought to you by Glendale Federal Bank. And I, I don't want to cause too many ticket sales, but to, or maybe increase ticket sales. The conversation should be pretty lively. At this week's luncheon. I think so. 
Well, Jerry, Jerry told me before the game, uh, he, he felt this team is not, have, he's not making excuses, but this team just hasn't practiced together very much. No. I mean, and he hasn't had his, his full group. He's had some certainly some problems with this club, and he's going to get it back together and get everybody healthy and ready to go. But I think it's going to take another four or five games. I mean, they'll definitely be a very strong basketball team for the conference season. But they're not as good right now as they will be. Winfred Walton, a skilled 6'10 player, becomes eligible December 20th. That's when Fresno State plays at Minnesota. And, of course, uh, Bulldogs still awaiting the possible return of Chris Heron. All of a kind, he loses it on the way back. Heron must be cleared uh, by his doctors. If he is to play again, uh, there's some talk that he could be out of his rehab in Utah sometime very soon in the next couple of days. And yeah, we, we, that, that all depends on his progress. And you certainly wish him the best and hope that, uh, you know, I mean, basketball is important, but your life is more important. Exactly. Right. You want to get that together before you step out on the basketball field. This is a lifelong battle that Chris Heron will be fighting, so much more important than any game of basketball. A whistle on a foul outside against Rafer Alston. His third. Demetrius Porter comes in for Fresno State, replacing Willie Farley. Adam Jacobson goes out to Bob Thomason's Tigers. He's replaced by Earl Clark. And Oliver Candy, who's done everything, in the, especially in the second half, still doesn't have a personal foul. I mean, he's, he's not committed a foul the whole game. Oliver Candy getting a rest as well on the bench. He's replaced by Jason Lee. Well, now you would think you can put the ball down low. Try to get it near the goal and uh, look for a ball near the basket, or it might set up the three-point shot either way. There's Porter with the three. The freshman hits outside. Approaching the midway point of the second half. Oh, they love to run those screens at the top of the key. They play very well without the ball. If you, if you look where the ball is not, you'll see the, the, the UOP players moving a lot. Stolen by folks. That's Porter. Shoot. I'm surprised Porter didn't get it right back to folks. That's what I see, thought that, he was going to do. Well, it, he, Porter is a young guy, and, and, and he was under control coming down the floor, but this is a situation all you got to do is dump the ball back to the trailer, and you have an easy dunk. And he will learn. Alston for three. Well, that's been really one of the highlights of the Fresno State offense, right for Alston. 17 points for Alston now. I can tell you this, there is absolutely no quit in Fresno State. I'll guarantee you that. They will continue to get after you the whole game, regardless of the situation. Jacobson. Foul going to be called on Demetrius Porter. And you're really in a situation where you're, you're hoping that that the Tigers get to the line and, and miss a one-on-one. And, one. and here Porter's just working as hard as he possibly can on Jacobson, looking to fall back and maybe get the call and trying to make something happen defensively. But Jacobson's a veteran, protected the ball well with his left hand, and, and that was a good call by the official. Porter says, what are you doing driving me in here? You belong, beyond, belong outside that three-point line, right? Well, normally he does, but in that situation, you, you see this guy's very versatile. They don't need his three-point shooting right now. Uh, what they need him to do is just control the tempo of the game. If the three-point shot's available, you take it, but if not, you just allow the game to flow to you. Jacobson rattles that one home, and he is one short of his career high. He has 27 points. And a very quiet second half. <laughs> the guy's got 27. Only four in the yeah, second half. Pretty quiet. Porter shoot on the three. This is what UOP has done a marvelous job of, is reversing the ball against the press. Not turning it over. Now under control. 
Williams goes up strong, but he's fouled by Terrence Roberson. A very unselfish team. You see, any time you're pressed, bring a man to the high post. Once the high post guy receives the ball, now he's in a very good position to either shoot right here, put it on the ground, or if they come and challenge you, put the ball down on the block. So that was just good decision making and a very good open court play by Mahaffey. Playing catch up has put Fresno State in the position of having to gamble on defense. And, and that's exactly right, Ralph. Now, now you're doubled, you're trapping, and once the Tigers make one or two, they make two passes against the trap, you will get a very good shot. Williams looking for his 18th point of the game. In and out, picked up by Lorichko, no good. So Fresno State with a chance to cut into a 21-point lead. For and of course, uh, Fresno State with their three-point shooting team on the floor. They, this is, they're very quick, obviously, but uh, a club that's now going to look to shoot the three as a major part of their offense to try to get back in this game. Williams again blocked by Andre Jones. Great defensive play by Jones. And that, that's a that's a marvelous play by Jones and. The official makes makes a very good call. This is a shot block, and Jones, who has beautiful timing, wants the timing, all leather, definitely leather on that, and the official right out of the basket calls a jump ball, and possession goes back to uh, UOP. Gutsy play with four fouls. The possession arrow has it in an inbound. For the Tigers, this is Clark. Now, you would think with the four fouls, they would bring it right back to Oliver Candy and let him go against Devondre Jones. See if they can drop it down. Play by Jones. Good defensive play. And then Demetrius Porter comes out of there after nearly being run over by Oliver Candy. Folks for three. In and out. Nobody able to rebound to Oliver Candy. Knocked the way out of bounds by Porter. But it will be Pacific basketball. Timeout on the floor. 7.54 remaining in the basketball game. Bulldogs still with a big hill to climb. by your San Joaquin Valley Lincoln Mercury dealers and by Fresno Madera and Valley Farm Credit, serving the San Joaquin from Bakersfield to Madera. The 18-point spread, as close as the Bulldogs have been in a while, the biggest deficit Fresno State faced was uh, 25. It was 75 to 50. You 
see it. Uh, nine to two Bulldog run has cut into that 25 point lead and got it down. But the, with 7.45 remaining, do you have enough time to get back into it? you got to start hitting some more three-pointers. Well, one thing with the three-point shot, you're really never out of a game. Now, this is obviously a big hill to climb, but you're going to need some misses here. And you're going to really need to go on a, on a big streak from the outside. Quarters pass, a little too tough for Corny to handle. The alternating possession will get the ball to Fresno State. I think you have to exclusively, Ralph, look look for three-point shots. I mean, obviously, if the three is available, you take it. It's a good three-point shooting team on the floor. But still, you cannot forget about Avondre Jones inside because he's, he's a, a very efficient scorer, and, and he can punish you around the goal if you give him the ball. Austin with a good head and shoulders fake. Yeah, this is the three. Forney with the rebound. And in. Yeah, again, though, that's Alston shooting without receiving the ball and just trying to do a little shake and bake and get it up. And I don't think he's at his best when he does that. The now within 16 in an 11 2 run. And if you're Pacific, Ralph, you cannot get too conservative. They're making passes and they're a lot looking at the goal. Well, now they are. All the can turns and hits. They're in a little trouble getting the other hand. Well, he's, a, he's had a very big second half. I thought Avondre Jones got the best of him in the first half, but Oliver Candy's really done uh, a super job to come back the second half and uh, be very efficient inside. Jones tries to answer, tipped up by Forney, no good. Rebound comes off to Jacobson. Under six and a half minutes left now. And you notice uh, who the Tigers have handling the ball almost exclusively. And Jacobson's really not a point. I mean, he can play the point, but he's more comfortable playing away from the ball. But he can, uh, he's done it all this evening. Yeah, he's just been in his own man. Got a fine second count. By Haffey. Rebound comes to Evandre Jones. Under six minutes now. 79-61, Pacific leading. Roberson's three-pointer no good. Rebound by Haffey. I thought a good diss that time by Austin. Roberson had a good look. Yeah, he good. He got the shot you wanted, just couldn't get it down. The Litsko and air ball. Here comes Fresno State. Two on two with Alston. Now pulls up and that hits. Now that's a great shot. See, you know, here's the difference on that shot. Now you're coming down the floor. You stop at the foul line. You're under control. You're, you're squared up. And you come to that jump stop and make a very efficient play. 19 for Alston. I think, I think Pacific, you know, they got to be getting a little bit tired. <laughs> they got the same guys on the floor here most of the half. A whistle at the other end will be a foul on Fresno State. Ray for Alston gets the call, and that's going to be four on Alston. So you've got Alston with four, Andre Jones with four, Damon Forney with four, but Forney's on the bench. Seems like Jacobson has lived at the foul line the second half. Every time you look up, he's shooting free throws. That's his 28th point of the night, tying a career high. And still the Tigers with only one team foul in the second half. And of course, Fresno State now uh, with, with 10. Are in the, so Pacific in a the bonus. They'll be shooting two every time down the floor. Now the zone again. Gets the rebound, tries to make some space, has it blocked by Olawa Candy, tipped up and in, and who do they give that to? Avondre Jones. I think Avondre Jones was the one who deflected, looked like to me at least, that he tipped it in. 16 points for Avondre Jones in the game. Playing uh, very well and for a long time here with four fouls. Well, Fresno State really working hard on defense. There's number five on Andre Jones. He got a piece of the Candyman's jersey. As Oliver Candy was on his way to a breakaway dunk. 
Well, the dogs extend the defense and, and really isolate Avondre Jones with Oliver Candy. And Avondre did everything he could that time to try to get around on the side and just didn't want the big guy to take it in and get the dunk. So he makes the foul and, of course, his fifth. So Jones leaves the game, fouling out 16 points, eight rebounds for the Bulldogs. He was 7 of 13 from the field. Yeah, I covered him quite a bit when he was at SC, Ralph. I, I got to tell you, I didn't think of Andre Jones could play with this kind of intensity, emotion, desire, and, and he is. And he's a different player than he was when he was a very young guy. And I think played a very good basketball game against a top quality opponent. Damon Forney will take of Andre Jones' place in the, the uh, lineup for Fresno State. Olawa Candy will shoot free throws. 427 remaining. It's 81-65 Pacific. A 16-point lead here for the Tigers, who have uh, virtually led this game throughout. Biggest lead was 25. Olawa Candy with 23 points in this game. Coming off a 25-point game against St. Mary's Thursday night. Now, it's really important on this free throw for Roberson to jump in there and get in front of Oliver Candy. You cannot allow a long rebound to come back to the shoot. Get up there. Missed them both. Folks has not been able to buy one. Now, he, he's a guy, when he was at Cal, he was a freshman of the year in the Pac-10. I saw him play quite a bit. You know, he, he made those with regularity. I mean, he's a very good 15, 18-foot shooter, but has not shot, ball, has shot the ball well yet uh, in this game. Well, you know, he opened the season. He made his Fresno State debut with 22 points, but uh, really offensively, the production has dropped off ever since then. He's been battling back spasms. Oliver Candy misses, the rebound comes out to Folks. Folks still works the boards hard. Roberson. Oh, they cannot buy one outside now, right? Yeah, as you said before, they're getting the shots they want. Also, the other guys made anyway. Again, Folks with the rebound. He'll try to put that back up and in. He throws it right into Oliver Candy. He saves it at the baseline. The other thing you like about European players in general, like Oliver Candy, is that they really don't get flustered. They just continue to play. I mean, nothing really bothers them. Whether it's going good, going bad, they just have a pretty good attitude on the floor. Another rebound for Folks. Foul. Foul will be, I believe, on Williams. You gotta, like, you gotta like Farley's tenacity because nothing has gone down outside. So he says, you know what? I'm just gonna take this one right to the goal. Try and, and stop me. Yeah, try and stop me. And that, and that time, I think they, he might have got away with a little bit of a break there. It looked like there was a lot of ball on that particular shot. But Farley will get the recipient of the foul and he'll go to the line. Williams uh, hobbled as he hit the floor hard on the play. We'll come out of the game replaced by Mahaffey. Williams with 17 points in the game for the Tigers tonight. Three minutes exactly remaining in this basketball game. It's 81-65. Pacific still leading by 16. Willie Farley at the free throw line. And in fact, Oliver Candy uh, next week uh, goes down to play Stanford with their 7-1 center, Tim Young. So there's some terrific centers uh, here here on the West Coast. Uh, Vondre Jones, of course, and Brad Millard at, uh, at St. Mary's, and uh, Oliver Candy and Tim Young. Uh, McCullough up in Washington. So there, there's some very good postmen on the West Coast this year. Farley makes them both, so the Bulldogs are within 14. Three minutes remaining.
great attitude. He's probably a 3-5 student too. Sixty-seven. The Tigers leading the Bulldogs with three minutes remaining in the basketball game. Yeah, here you really look, Ralph, at how versatile and relaxed this guy is. All over Candy with the block. Look at him with the presence of mind to keep his foot in bounds and make the nice bounce pass and then continue down the floor. So he can block shots. He can score inside. He's got great work ethic, and uh, I think a guy the pro scouts are definitely looking real hard at. Take a chance, look to double up, see if you can get to him real quick. I wouldn't put Jacobson on the line, anybody but him, really. Alston has to be careful, he has four fouls. And Andre Jones has already fouled out. And they take all of Candy out, you notice, because he's not a very good free throw shooter. So in the last three minutes with a nice lead, uh, Thompson just going to take him out and put his best free throw shooters on the floor. They do, by the way, have temporary 35 second shot clocks in place now at the end of each. By half, he gets it off to beat the buzzer. So they took all 35 off the shot clock for getting it away. Roberson finally gets a three. His second. Well, they've been on 81. And Pacific's been on 81 for a long time. Bulldogs within 11 now as we approach the two minute mark. Oh, he wanted timeout. 22nd timeout called by Jacobson, who was in trouble. Uh, I thought the official at first called a foul, but instead Jacobson called the 22nd timeout. I thought he was fouling the official. He was just ready to make the call, and Jacobson bailed him out by, by calling the 22nd. And Bob Thompson is saying right now, you know, I thought you were going to be fouled. Yeah, he also told the very same thing to uh, referee Jim Stupin. 29 points a career high, uh, 23 of those came in the first half when he was just on fire from three-point. Has not hit a three-pointer in the second half. Now with 31 seconds left on the 35, the Dogs now down 11 with 2.08 to go. They're in a situation where they have to gamble defensively, obviously. You're going to look to trap, you're going to look to double up. But every foul is a two-shot opportunity for, for the Tigers. So I don't know if Jerry's going to tell his guys to go ahead and make the foul. He may elect to continue to try to take chances and look for an interception and look for a quick steal. But, you know, they're shooting 57% from the free throw line entering this game, and that was a kind of a cause for concern. Oh, good steal by Austin. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's a nine-point game. Don't go away. Don't go away yet. It's not over yet. This guy. I, I would go for anybody else but him. Well, anybody else. Like folks tried to find it. Folks is one of the guys who has fouls to give. Well, at this point, it doesn't matter if you have fouls to give. If you have four, you go after the guy. Now the shot clock is down to 15. Now you just may not want to foul. May not want to foul now. Don't foul. Just play defense now, force him to shoot. Him. Well, let's go for three. That's no good. We got Farley. A minute 22 left. Well, you need you need a score and a timeout, Ralph. You, you need here's what you need: a quick a quick three and a timeout. A quick three and a timeout. Get it to Austin. They do. Roberson, three pointer. No good. Well, that would have made life interesting. That would have really made. Yeah, that was. I think I think the Tigers might have <laughs> might have been thinking about it. That goes down, and you're down six. 103 remaining with the foul. Now I pick up that uh, thought about the free throws. Pacific was not very good going into this game from the free throw line, although it's a little deceiving because they, they did make their last 14 free throws against St. Barry's on Thursday night. Well, and the fact is when you have, you're in a two-shot situation, so it takes a terrific amount of pressure off the first shot. I mean, you're very relaxed at the line because of the two shots. But you don't have any choice if you're Fresno State right now. I mean, you have to follow them in and three to go. Valichko misses the first. Well, had that three gone down, of course, you know, it's horseshoes and darts. You know, what if? But uh, this, this club may have been thinking about it. 
Ola Wakandi back into the game for Bob Thomason's Tigers. There you see the timeout situation. A full and a 20 remaining for Fresno State. Well, let's go. Makes it a 10-point game. Well, every possession has to be a good one. Every time down the floor now, you have to score, score in a hurry, and get a timeout. Can ill afford, you cannot miss one. Follett, in and out on the three. Rebound goes off over with Candy and out of bounds to Travis on State. So the Bulldogs will have it again. Yeah, and, and Bob Thomason of UOP gets Oliver Candy, of course, back in the game. He sees this lead diminishing, and he wants his big guy in there to rebound the ball. Of course, he doesn't want him handling the ball on the offensive end because if he gets fouled, he's not a good free throw shooter. Again, the ball knocked out of bounds. Boston will take it out. And Forney that time brought the ball down. Well, all he had to do was take it in, but he brought it down and was able to allow the little guy in there to knock it out. Austin strong, rebound Folks. Puts up a two-pointer, that's no good. Rebound over the candy. Under 30 seconds now. Jacobson away from the ball, calling a timeout for Pacific. 22nd timeout. Well, the last minute has been very frustrating. Fresno State makes a terrific comeback to, to get back in the game, actually. I mean, they're nine down with the ball with an opportunity to make a three, and they just have not been able to shoot the basketball. And you look at the timeouts. Twenty-seven seconds remaining in the ball game. After this timeout, it's Pacific ball out of bounds. Volitsko gets it into Barry Marvel, who gets it to Jacobson. Into the front court under 20 seconds. Roberson grabs it to send Jacobson to the free throw line. Well, you have to give this club some credit, though. I mean, the University of Pacific came out. They played an, an unbelievably strong first half, shot the ball extremely well. Jacobson with a career night. All of a candy, very solid. But Fresno State threw it all. Hung in there, hung in there, down 25 the second half, Ralph. Closed it to nine with the ball, with an opportunity to make the three. Did not shoot the ball and make some shots at the end. It's, it's still a very strong effort by the Dogs against, in my opinion, this is a Big West champion, against a team I think that's going to go to the NCAA tournament and do some damage. 31 points now for Jacobson. Bolts is again there. Barley with the rebound. Folks with a dunk inside. Nice pass from Austin. It's a frustration dunk for Tremaine Folks. I mean, he, he can play better than he's playing right now, and I think he just wanted to finalize a shot. And, of course, Jerry's saying, go foul. He wants to get it over with. You're going to foul him at the end. Game's over, so you got nine-tenths of a second to go. This will be the third loss in a row for Fresno State. Bulldogs... We'll drop to three and three overall. And, uh, most likely out of the top 25. They would be out of the national rankings for the first time this season. It'll be 23 straight wins on the home floor for Bob Thomason and the Tigers. I think it's going to take a Herculean effort, Ralph, for them to lose at home this year. I'm telling you right now. The Sword will improve to eight and three overall. And you're right, this is a, they've got something going here as the final nine tenths of the second ticks off, and it's over. The Bulldogs have a rough time at Stockton. Jerry Tarkanian sees Fresno State fall to Pacific 85 to 74. We'll be back with more after this.
better than they played. That first half was about as good a basketball as any team's ever played against me. They they never missed the shot. They moved the ball well. I, you know, we got a ways to go. We're going to be all right. I, we're, 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 we got a ways to go. We're, you know, this, this loss, or we've just been a nightmare this week. I think, you know, my opinion is you, you, you lost the game, but you were down 25 the second half. You closed it to nine. You had numerous chances in the last two. You had a chance to come back in that game. We had a couple of threes. We had one that went in, you know, would have cut it to six. But the way it goes, you know, they they certainly deserved to win. They were much better than we were tonight. Much better ball club. We have to execute better. We we have to get better, and I, I, I still believe we will. All right, I know you got some games coming up. Good luck. And uh, I know you'll keep your chin up, and they'll keep working hard. I know you're going to come back. This was a brutal week. I may be the worst week I've had in a long time. All right, Coach. Good luck in the future, huh? UOP played great. Jerry said they deserved to win. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. and make for Fresno State falling to three and three overall with the Bulldogs' third straight loss, 85-74, at the hands of the red hot Pacific Tigers. And I'll tell you, they were hot tonight. Uh, yes, they were. As a matter of fact, you heard what uh, Jerry Targanian said. He said in the first half, he can't remember anybody playing any better than the University of Pacific. So you, you know, you got to give them a salute. They did a great job tonight. The Bulldogs were down uh, by 25, 75, 50 before launching a 22 to six run, getting to within nine. But as again, as Jerry said, could not get that three to fall, which would have gotten it to six, and then things kind of went downhill. Sun Made, the world's favorite raisin, proudly brings you tonight's player of the game. It is Fresno State junior guard Rafer Alston with 21 points and six assists. He hit five three-pointers for the Bulldogs. The Sun Made Raisin player of the game, brought to you by Sun Made, the world's favorite raisin. We'll be back with more from Stockton right after this. Stay with is brought to you by DKA Computers, your technology source. It came in the second half when uh, Michael Olawa Kennedy really asserted himself. And after the outside play of Adam Jacobson in the first half, Olawa Kennedy with the big slam dunk 
part of his big night. He finished with 23 points. The play of the game brought to you by DKA Computers, your technology source. A lot of those plays, actually, for Pacific tonight, Dan. Yeah, they had a lot of those uh, look down at the basket shots <laughs> in the second half. And uh, they played a little more conservatively in the second half, but uh, Fresno State was coming after them. They spread the floor and got some good shots. So Again, good effort Jerry by Tar UOP. And Jerry Tarkanian says, uh, don't worry. It's too early to worry. He still thinks he's going to have his guys and his players together when it uh, when it really counts once Fresno State gets into the conference season. Look at the three-pointers. Yeah, look at the three-point. Look at the free throws. 33 attempts to eight. So, you know, that happens when you get behind and you got to press and you're on the road. And look at the rebounds. Uh, 40 to 34, the dogs did win out on that. So, uh, I, and your point, well taken. This Fresno State, Fresno State team will be better. They're going to be a different club, I think, when the conference season starts. They're going through growing pains and, and they're really feeling it. They played some tough games on the road, but, but they will get it back together again as soon as they get everybody back playing and uh, everybody healthy. Those Enterprise rent car stats also show. 74 shots taken by Fresno State tonight. Well, they took their shots. They came down and, you know, they had to get the ball up in a hurry. That, that wasn't really the problem. Some of the shots were there. Uh, they just did not go down when they needed them uh, because UOP had built up such a big lead and the dogs just couldn't come back all the way. Fresno State hosts St. Mary's, a scrappy St. Mary's team Tuesday night. What do you think about that? St. Mary's, very good team. I've seen them play a couple of times this year and uh, uh, they're a team that's going to come in. They, they don't have their, their big guy, Brad Millard. He's hurt, but still a club that played this team, UOP, very well a couple of nights ago here. They didn't beat them, but they played them to a close ball game. So I think that'll be a very good game. Fans want to see a, a, a great little guard, uh, Savulic uh, for St. Mary's. David Savulic, who's an excellent three-point shooter. Uh, certainly at Fresno State will have to play well to win that game. Bulldogs still with a lot of growing to do, and uh, the road back begins Tuesday night at home against St. Mary's. For the entire crew, I'm Ralph Wood and Daniel Almany saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.
have the sewer turned off if the tenant leaves, like the last one, which you've heard, just heard of most of the horror stories. So therefore, you have to turn it on into your name, then turn it off, and then they, the next day, and then they charge you for it, which is unfair. But to try to make a... Uh, and putting it on the taxes, I just don't see where that's, pro that's feasible because we're being hit. Our property values are going down. You're placing it on, on more on there. Everybody seems to have forgotten. Last year, we had to repair all the levees. I mean, that was a big thing that got put on all of our property taxes. So to make a long story short, and the houses that don't are vacant, you're paying for sewer. I mean, and I got the same thing. I had a house setting empty and I have to pay for it. I have to call down there, I have to explain, I have to write letters. That takes time. I also have a son in the military who, who keeps his valuables in his house and wants to have it when he comes back. The only thing I pay for is PG&E, or he pays for is PG&E. We don't have the water, we don't have the sewer, we have no other utilities on. Why should he have to pay for sewer? And he's going to pay for it if you put it on the taxes, and we're going to pay for it 12 months out of the year instead of just once in a while. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. James Taylor. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I hear all these things tonight, and I don't know a lot of the details behind them, so I'll just tell you about a simple... I have six rental homes and how I function. That might help you. You're looking for help to understand the problems, okay? I have people sign a one-year lease, and in it I put down that they will pay all utilities. So, um, if with the new setup here, uh, I don't know how to increase their rents. The rents, the people now average, oh, during a year's time on six houses, I'll average about seven or eight late bills coming in. And then I call the people and they say, oh, yeah, we forgot it, and so on. And they pay it. If they don't, I keep phoning every day until if they, because they tell me I'm, I mail it in, and it gets right down to the end. And sometimes they don't pay it, and I, and I'm and they told me they didn't. I I don't call again, and so a, a year later or whatever it is, I get a bill and it's on the tax bill, and those people are gone. So uh, I, some of the things I heard here is, if they had to have if they had to have down payments, you know, put down some kind of a payment when they move in, the problems would be solved from that end of things. Now, whether that works in all of this split water things and everything you got, I don't know. But uh, uh, it's, I think the gentleman said it was only $22 or so at it that you'd have to raise a tenant's rents. Well, I know what that's gonna cause my tenants. They're, I'm gonna, instead of getting eight or 10 plate bills a year, I'll get more. And more